Hi friends. I want you to know how very much I miss you. You know, I would love to be able to go to church, to gather in the sanctuary, to listen to the choir and the praise band, to sing songs and pray together, and to have a cup of coffee with you after worship between services so we could catch up. And I would give anything to be able to have breakfast with the youth in Park Place. But for now, we have to wait. And waiting, it is so hard. You know, when I go to a doctor's office and I sit in the waiting room, I can wait for a while, patiently. But after my appointment time has come and gone, and it's gone on for a while, I think, hmm, I wonder why it's taking so long today. I wonder if somebody else was late for their appointment, and so now my appointment's late. I wonder if they lost my file, or if I missed my name being called. And then I think about the work that doctors do. And I think about maybe my doctor is treating somebody with an urgent need. Maybe my doctor is giving somebody some bad news. And so I take a deep breath and I practice my patience because if I were in that situation, I would want people to be patient with me. But waiting, it's really hard. You know, that's why Amazon is so successful because before COVID we could find something we wanted, push a couple buttons and it would be at our house the next day. With COVID, it takes a little longer, but they're still one of the fastest deliveries. So say you want a pair of red boots and you go to Amazon because they have everything. You can find red boots on there for sure. You go to Amazon, you find your red boots, you push, put in my bag. And then you go to the checkout and you push one more button because your credit card's in there and it's all ready to go. One more button you push and it's at your door the next day. Those red boots are ready for you. We're a really impatient culture. You know, I think about texting and how we really want an answer right away. And so we text somebody a question. We know they get it because everybody has them phone, their phone with them all the time. And we know they read the question because we saw those little dots rolling on the bottom. And then we wait for an answer. And if it doesn't come when we want it to, we wonder why. So for example, when I text my young adult children and they don't text me back right away, I get a little worried. I wonder if something happened. I wonder if I should check on them. I wonder if I should give them a call because now I'm a little worried about what's happened to them. Tell me I'm not the only parent that does that, right? Waiting is really hard. And there are still times that we wait a lot. Traffic at rush hour. And most people aren't very patient about that. We wait in construction zones where we know they could do that work faster. We've seen them sitting around. We wait in line at amusement and theme parks because the rides are worth it. We wait in line at really good restaurants because the food's worth it. We wait for the rain to stop. We wait for special occasions to arrive and we wait for pandemics to be over. But waiting, it is so hard. There are another group of people who did not wait well. They were the Israelites. During their exodus, Moses led them out of Egypt and headed toward the promised land. It was all cheers and cooperation as they literally left the Egyptians in the mud. Everyone supported Moses while the traveling was easy. After hundreds of years in slavery, they were headed to a new land and to freedom. They believed that it would be wonderful soon, soon not 40 years, like next year. But the journey was long, really long, and impatience developed. They didn't want to wait any longer. God was taking too long. Moses was working too slow. Some started asking, wouldn't it just be better if we went back to Egypt? At least in Egypt, we knew what to expect. At least in Egypt, we got fed something besides manna. At least in Egypt, we would know where we were going to die and be buried. Shouldn't we go back to Egypt? They got so tired of waiting on God that they built idols and turned to other gods for help. Remember the golden calf. And if you don't, look it up in Exodus. But God was always with them. And God always found a way to bring them back to him. In her book, God Whispers, Karen Gadar talks about the Israelites when they were confused about what they were doing and where they were going. 
In the beginning of their journey, God told them that they would be guided by the divine presence. They should follow a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And when the cloud descended upon the people, it would be a sign to camp, not to journey on until it lifted. Maybe now we find ourselves in a cloud and we are wondering when the way forward will be clear. Being in a haze is uncomfortable. It produces restlessness and anxiety. It requires patience to wait for the cloud to be lifted. The Israelites were feeling the desire to journey forward before God was ready for them to move. God, out of love for his people, was keeping them safe and planning for their life and freedom. Many of us are feeling the desire to move out of the cloud that we've been living in. We are not feeling patient in the waiting. We want to gather. We want to go to dance recitals, to graduations and weddings. We want to celebrate with our friends and family. And we want to go back to church. But it's just not time for us to gather in large groups. It's hopeful that we're able to begin to gather in small groups, social distancing and with masks. And the waiting to move forward is so hard, but we need to be patient. It helps me to think like I do in the doctor's offices. I need to be patient because someone else's life might be affected by all of us going and gathering together. Someone else might be at risk. So for now, Let's live in hope because one day we will be able to gather. We will be able to gather in prayer and song. But for now, we must practice patience. Take a deep breath and be patient. Be patient and know that God is with us in the cloud. And when it lifts, we will be able to journey on together. Let's pray. Lord, give us patience. Let us know that you are with us in our homes, just as you were always with the Israelites in the wilderness. Give us clarity. It's all so confusing. It's so hard to know who to listen to and who to trust. Lord, give us enough love that we can put an end to hate. Give us the wisdom and grace to stand in love together, regardless of race and sexuality or any other label that defines us. Lord, empower your people with love and patience. In your name we pray. Amen. I hope to see you soon. Blessings.